hello students so today in the chapter fiber to fabric i am going to discuss another most important animal fiber silk so let's start so what is a silk silk is a fine strong soft and shining fiber produced by silk worm in making their cocoons right so silk it is a type of natural fiber which is obtained from an insect known as what known as silk moth so since it is obtained from an insect so therefore it is an animal fiber okay and it is made up of what it is made up of protein and it is the strongest natural fiber okay the soft looking silk yarn is as strong as compared to the thread of steel so just imagine how strong a uh, sorry silk yarn is so silk fibers are converted into silk yarn which is used for making what used for making silk clothes and then this silk cloth is used for making sarees and other dresses right now next what is sericulture the rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk is known as what is known as sericulture it is actually an occupation right so it actually means what sericulture actually means silk farming and it is a very very old occupation in india india produces a lot of silk on commercial scale right so now before we go to describe the process of obtaining silk first of all it is necessary to know the life history of a silk moth right so let's discuss about the life history of a silk moth so in this picture you can say it is a cycle the cycle it consists of what eggs then silkworm then cocoon then cocoon developing the moth then followed by male and female again this female silk moth it lays eggs okay so as i said you silk moth it is a type of insect right and this life history of a silk moth it's very interesting because what because silk moth is not formed as such from eggs directly right the silk moth it passes through the worm like stage called what called larva or caterpillar and an encased form called pupa during its development between what between the hatching of egg and formation of adult silk moth thus what we can say the cycle it can be said as like from egg it goes to what it goes to larva or caterpillar okay then pupa and then the silk moth right now the larva of a silk moth which produces the silk is actually the silk worm okay now one by one i'll go, i'm going to describe you how this uh, means how this process of life history of silk moth goes on now the female silk moth it lays what it lays eggs on the leaves of mulberry tree basically it lays uh, eggs on mulberry tree now the eggs hatch to form a worm like larva okay the larva of a silk moth are known as what are known as caterpillar or silk worm okay mostly it looks like what it looks like an earth worm right now this silk worms it actually feed on the leaf of the mulberry tree and it grows bigger in size right silk is formed in liquid form in the glands of silk worms head actually two glands are present in the silk worms head from where the silk is formed as i said you silk is what it is protein in nature that means if you see the chemical composition it is protein in nature okay now next when the silk worm is ready to enter the next stage of development that is pupa it first weaves a net to hold itself just like a spider right then what happen it swings its head that means it moves its head from side to side in the form of figure 8 continuously in the pattern of figure 8 it swings its head and it forms what it forms a net now during this movement of head the silk worm it secretes silk in the liquid form through the tiny openings in its head and then what happen it comes in contact with the air and what happens it solidifies and becomes what becomes a silk fiber or silk thread right now as soon as this silk fiber or silk thread is formed as soon as that form the silk worm what happens it covers itself completely by the silk fiber right now this silk fiber the silky spun okay the covering silky spun by the silk worm of a silk moth is known as what is known as cocoon 
it is white in color right now this cocoon which is made by silkworm to protect its development as pupa that means inside the cocoon the pupa it leaves right now pupa it is such a stage in a life history of a silk moth when the caterpillar it becomes what it becomes encased in a hard shell of silk fiber right now what is the hard shell uh, uh, shell over here the cocoon is a hard shell right the silkworm it continues then to develop in the form of pupa inside the cocoon to form what to form the silk moth right now when the pupa develops fully to form the adult silk moth then what happens the cocoon it splits up okay and a beautiful silk moth what happens then it comes out right the adult silk moth then lays eggs in this way what happens the life history of a silk moth is completed right now what happens soon as the cocoon is formed it is used to obtain the silk fibers and developing silk worm right now this is because like if the silk worm is allowed to mature into a silk moth then the fully formed silk moth it secretes a liquid to dissolve a part of a cocoon okay and if it happens then what happens a silk cannot be formed that means a properly the silk yarn it cannot be formed right so this is why what happens the cocoons having the developing silkworms inside them are used to obtain the silk so some of the silkworms are however allowed to live and mature into silk moths so that they can lay eggs to produce more silkworms right that means suppose if hundreds of cocoons are there suppose so in that case what happens the farmers the silk farmers what do they do they take the silk fibers from 50% of the cocoon and rest 50% of the cocoons they are allowed to mature so that an adult silk moth it comes out and again it lay eggs okay so now next we will describe or how to means how the silk is produced let's see what is the first step first step is the rearing of silk worm to obtain cocoons right now a female as i said you that a female silk moth it lays hundreds of eggs at a time right now these eggs of silk moths are stored carefully on paper strips okay and then they are sold to silk worm farmers okay next what the farmers do the farmers they keep these eggs at suitable temperature and humidity under hygienic conditions right then these eggs are wormed to suitable temperature for hatching now when the eggs hatch the silkworm it comes out of the eggs okay then the silkworm which comes out from the egg they are fed up on the mulberry leaves the silkworms eat day and night they feed upon this mulberry leaves and grow big in size right then after 25 to 30 days the silkworms they stop eating and they get ready to spin the cocoons the silkworm climb the twigs placed near them and spin the cocoons of silk fibers right the silkworms enclose themselves completely inside the silk cocoons in 2 or 3 days okay so this is about what this is about rearing of silkworms next is processing of cocoons to obtain silk fibers now next how this uh, means cocoons are processed to obtain the silk fiber all the cocoons are collected now at one place okay then these piles of cocoons after that they are placed in hot water that means the amount of cocoon which is taken for the production of silk rest of the cocoon it is left for means growing pupa and uh, finally it grows into an adult silk moth okay and the amount of cocoon which is taken for the production of silk now this pile of cocoon it is placed in hot water okay now why in hot water because hot water makes the silk fiber of cocoon to separate out okay the long silk fibers which are obtained by unwinding the thread from cocoons okay now this process that means the process of taking out silk fiber from the cocoon for use as a silk is known as what is known as reeling it's a very important what is reeling okay now this reeling it is done in a special machine which unwind the fibers of silk from the cocoons next process is what next process is converting silk fibers into silk cloth right now then the silk fibers which are obtained from cocoons as you all know then how the yarns are made they are spun or twisted to form silk thread called silk yarn now this silk yarn is then woven into loom into the silk cloth by the weavers this is all about your processing and production of silk
okay now there are different varieties of silk okay the varieties of silk you can say mulberry silk tassar silk muga silk kusha silk eri silk okay the most common is what most common is the mulberry silk right these skills are obtained from sorry these silks are obtained from the cocoons spun by the silkworm of different types of silk moth okay the silk which is obtained from the cocoons of mulberry silk moth is called what is called mulberry silk as i said you that it is a most common one right and it is a very soft lustrous shiny and elastic and then it can be dyed into beautiful colors so hope all of you have understood about the production of silk and uh, the life history of a silk moth thank you students